Now it's time to get into the details of stability control action. Now the stability controls will activate the brakes on specific wheels without the brake being depressed. We'll go through the operating sequences of controlling brakes where the motorist is not required to depress the brake pedal. I know we said that a number of times, but we can't say it enough. Specific valves must be closed to keep applying the brakes. Why is that? Well, this is not normal braking action. The brakes are going to operate the pump pre own pump pressure. The pump supplies all the pressure, and if we pressurize the system without closing the valves, we're simply going to lock up the brakes. So we're also going to have to use some things like reservoir cutoff valves to open the supply of fluid to the intake pump. These have a number of different names. We'll talk about them. We'll show you how they work. It's phase one of stability control. The hold or isolate valve, whatever name you want to call them, must be energized to block pressure to the pumps. Remember, some manufacturers even call these pressure increase valves. The hold pressure mode is very similar to the two valve control we had before where we only had eight valves in the whole system. With the exception of having to work with the pump instead of the master cylinder. We've changed things. We're no longer just distributing pressure to the individual wheels. We're now not applying pressure to the wheels. Just the opposite of some things. An extra valve for stability control is the master cutoff solenoid. It's used when the pump supplies pressure to the brake system and the master cylinder needs to be isolated. The isolate and pressure reduction valves are going to cycle momentarily, applying brake pressure to specific wheel cylinders to give us improved vehicle stability. This is why those tractor trailers we saw in the earlier part of the presentation would tip over at 26 miles an hour. We put in stability control with these new yaw and steering sensors. The same truck could do 40 miles an hour and not tip over. It's a very important thing. Let's start looking at the schematic, see how all this works. We have pressure now. The master cutoff solenoid at the top is closed. It blocks the pressure. Now, the pink in this area is pressurized. Now, in this particular case, this drawing shows the pressure hold valve as off. We know that has to be on. And if it's on, the, the part that's now yellow we see down there is going to be uh, cut off. We need that cut off because we have to block that pressure to keep from applying brake to the wheels. So the isolation valves need to be closed to prevent application with brake pressure on the lines. Otherwise, we're going to lock the wheels off. Now let's look through this and talk about it again. It's going to hold the pressure off the wheels most of the time. Very small percentage of time. It's going to get in this mode anytime it sees yaw rates coming up off of zero and start to indicate vehicle stability might be needed. Remember, we can't wait for this system to power up, close all these solenoids, and then start working. As soon as it sees the yaw sensor start indicating we're turning, and vehicle speed and steering wheel activity, it's going to turn the pump on because we're seeing high yaw values. Not high enough yet to indicate we need an intervention, but it's going to only take milliseconds. So here's what's going to happen next. The isolate and pressure reduction valves, the two of them are going to cycle off and on, applying pressure to specific cylinders on specific wheels to improve vehicle stability. Now we're just showing one here where it's turning off and on it's off and on and the pump is going to replace all of this pressure. So don't assume that all cylinders, all these systems, are going to operate exactly alike. The functions will be the same on everything. Trucks, they have individual uh, valve packages by the wheels. But even in automotive, we're going to have differences in different configurations using different nomenclature. Bosch, for example, it has different names and circuit arrangements just to give you a clue of what we're looking at. The isolation or blocking valve. In Bosch's jargon, is called the inlet valve. The pressure reduction or dump valve is called the outlet valve in the Bosch system. And we'll walk through the actions needed to apply the rear brakes for stability control in a Bosch system because it's got a bunch of extra solenoids, more than just the three per channel like we just had.